Hi, I'm Kaya Scodelario, and I'm here today with Harper's Bazaar UK to share what you don't know about me. Three words my friends would use to describe me would be the planner. Like, I, I like to bring people together. A little bit chaotic, in a good way. Funny, and hopefully loyal. What makes me happy, what really makes me happy at the moment is being at home in London and doing simple things like going for a walk on Hampstead Heath, my favorite place in the world, cooking for my family, taking my dog for a walk. Sounds all kind of bland, but I think we lead, actors sometimes have these amazing opportunities to travel the world and do all these really cool things, but I kind of love the simple things the most. What makes me angry? I can get very impassioned about football. My friends say I turn into a different person when I'm watching an Arsenal game, which I'm not proud of. Uh, but I can be very, very passionate about that, and that maybe translates into anger. I think it's just passion. To be honest, I think every every day, every moment, every job I do, I still feel really grateful to be there and really excited about the future. Um, I think I'm incredibly lucky to do a job that I love. A lot of people, especially nowadays, uh, they don't have that opportunity. You know, they've worked to survive, and much of my friends do, and I get to be creative, I get to do something I'm passionate about, and I get to kind of shape a career out of that as well. So for me, it genuinely is every moment still feels exciting. The gentleman in one sentence is high fashion sojourn into the criminal underworld. I play Susie Glass, who is kind of the caretaker of her dad's weed empire. She's the man on the ground and she looks after various different estates and makes sure that everything is running smoothly. She's incredibly intelligent dangerous and very well dressed. I wasn't very good at many things. I was a painfully shy child, very insecure, very anxious. Never felt like I fit in anywhere at all. When I was 10, I played Oliver Twist in my school play. And that was kind of the first moment that I really felt um, connected to anything. Acting has always been a passion of mine and not kind of, you know, acting for a career or to be famous or anything like that. It was just something that I, I enjoyed doing. It felt like breathing. Um, but I did have a tiny summer job as a florist when I was 15. I think I got it through work experience from school. And I loved that. I really, really found that fun. Um, even though I kind of had to do the shitty jobs, like changing out the murky vase water, which is gross actually. And I had like thorns in my hand. And But I, I really loved the idea of running a small business like that. And um, something that is so small, but can be so significant to someone. Oh, the good bits of career advice. It's gonna sound cheesy, but it's true. I remember watching one of the Beyonce documentaries and, and she was explaining how she's been very polite with people and in the room. And, and I think as women, we kind of all have this thing. And I, I have done in the industry for 15 years. I've been so afraid of, I'm just all very aware of, uh, as a woman, I have to work twice as hard to put a smile on my face, to seem pleasant, to seem likable. I think a lot of times, you know, if a male actor is intense, then it's seen as he's creative, that's the way he is. Whereas for women, we're held to a higher degree and, and it's very easy to be we're written off as difficult to work with or things like that. So I always overcompensate by being extremely polite. And sometimes that's cost me in that I don't assert myself the way that I should. And I remember Beyonce talking about this and saying how now she goes into a room and she knows what she needs and she's unafraid to say it. And I'm still not quite there because I am painfully Britishly polite sometimes, but um, I'm getting a lot better at, within my career, making the decisions and, and being assertive about what I want and what I think is right and feeling as though I belong on a set just as much as anyone else. The advice I would give to my younger self is to pay more attention to taxes and to my accountant and to learn about life skills properly and that that stuff is really, really boring but really, really important and you should really know what's going on. I kind of never really had anyone looking after me in the business side of it all. I left home when I was 16 and had to figure it out myself. And um, that's really hard. And I think that kids in school should be taught life skills because I haven't used trigonometry once. What does self-care mean to me? That's kind of evolved recently, actually. And five years ago, I wouldn't believe that I was saying this out loud, but I've started doing hot yoga. What? <laughs> I used to hate exercising and I didn't really take care of my body and myself very much and, and now I'm really kind of making that priority. I'm really enjoying working out. I'm really enjoying doing games nights with friends and, and not kind of feeling like I have to say yes to partying all the time. I'm enjoying kind of having a little bit more quiet time. My favorite thing in the world to do is like read a book and sit. Yeah, I mean, the biggest beauty tip I have 
from being on set is that your skin really takes a beating when you're under hot lights for hours a day and, and working long hours and now I make it a priority to really make sure I'm moisturizing correctly. I use Factor 50 every day because I'm quite pale naturally um, and freckly and I've learned to embrace my freckles but protect them too. Yeah, just kind of making sure that, that at the end of the day that I'm rehydrating my skin. Um, I love doing an overnight mask once a week. It just kind of makes me wake up feeling a little bit more refreshed and to drink lots of water. I sound like an old lady, but it's true. I feel most beautiful when my son tells me that I am. <laughs> uh, when, when he says that I look happy or when he sees me getting ready to go out for something and he says that I look pretty, that like means the most to me because I know it's not that he can tell that I feel happy. And um, I think that's what true beauty should look like. What's the most luxurious? I have bought some luxurious things. I really like fine underwear. Um, I think there's something so exciting about knowing that what you're wearing underneath is just for you and for whoever you choose it to be for. And um, uh, I really find like gorgeous pieces, uh, silks and, and yeah, I have some really nice underwear that I think kind of just makes me feel very feminine, very sexy, even if I'm in character or I'm wearing something that's casual, like knowing that that's what I've got on underneath, I find quite exciting. I love Electric Feel by MGMT. And that song kind of connects me back to being on Skins and being in Bristol and the nightlife in Bristol, which was so cool. It was so ravey, it was so, it was kind of like an indie phase and, and it was just like you'd go out in trainers and rip jeans and no one would care. And you'd go to dance and to sweat. And, and that's kind of what I love about a night out. And that song really transports me back to that time. I can samba, I'm Brazilian and I, I can samba. So yeah, I can, I can shape my house. <laughs> my party trick, do you want me to show you? This is my party trick. I don't know if I can do it here properly. If you try and do it yourself, you'll realize how cool this is. If you put it flat, you can get to there, but I can get all the way back around which is probably terrible for my joints. Check back in a few years. Oh, I love reading. At the moment, I just finished Tomorrow, 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 which was incredible. I actually am going on holiday soon, so I've bought about six books that I haven't read yet, and I'm gonna try and get through them all there. I love autobiographies. I'm actually rereading re all the Roald Dahl books for my son at the moment, and that's really magical, kind of going back to that time. And Jacqueline Wilson, actually. I'm getting him to read the Jacqueline Wilson books, and, and that to me is, like my primary school years and going back, rereading them all. And they're kind of like really dark subjects that she touches on. And I think it's quite cool that, that she was willing to do that. And that as teenage girls, we kind of had that to, to read. But um, yeah, Jacqueline Wilson books. The best gift I've ever been given. My friends threw me an incredible 30th. And that was like the best weekend of my life. We were in a, a beautiful house in the countryside and they just made it really, really fun and full of little details that like we had a 90s sleepover theme the first night and played beer pong and then we had a murder mystery night and um, like we played Jenga and hide and seek and, and it was just like kind of going back to your childhood sleepovers. And that was a huge gift because they all carved out time. I mean, a lot of my friends are actors and they're all over the world and everyone managed to keep this one weekend free to come and, and be there. And yeah, that was very cool. I do have guilty pleasures. My guilty pleasures, our reality TV, like bottom of the barrel, anything. I will just sit for hours and lose myself in reality TV. It just switches my brain off in a great way, better than anything else. And I will, I just discovered Real Housewives of New Jersey and I watched eight hours straight of it yesterday when I should have been preparing for today. So <laughs> that's what I did instead. Thanks so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit more about me.